Today, I'm gonna survive 100 days in medieval Minecraft. Now, while the name only says medieval, it's a lot more. More like dragons, monsters, spirits, literally anything and everything medieval and magical. It's up to us to survive 100 days in this world, and along the way, I have to complete three objectives. First of all, survive, which is gonna be difficult with the amount of monsters in this world. Second of all, adventure as much as I can, and I mean enter into every dungeon I see. And lastly, defeat all four dragon types, the ice dragon, the fire dragon, the lightning dragon, and the ender dragon, which won't be as easy because to enter into the end, I'll have to collect all 12 unique eyes of ender hidden in different parts of the world. If you've ever wanted to be on a dragon slaying, medieval, dangerous adventure, that's exactly what we're gonna go on today. As a side note, I wanna say thank you to Dragon City for sponsoring this video, quite on topic, and also thank you to Sharky for making this amazing, amazing mod pack. He really deserves more credit. Other than that, grab your favorite snacks, relax, and enjoy as I try to survive 100 days in medieval Minecraft. Starting out on day one, I spawn in this desert village way up on a mountain. I love this place. Wow, I can't believe I just spawned in right here. I looked around some more and then I realized that I already had a stone sword and a stone shield equipped. I also got this quest book, which I opened up and I got some starter loot from it, which was a water canteen that would replenish my hydration and a little spawn bag that gave me some wood, food, and torches. After checking out my starter loot, I got to looking around the village. Whoa, look, it's a turtle. Hi. <gasps> Star Tortoise. Whoa, I can place it down and take it with me. Nice, I'm taking you with me, buddy. You're really cool. Oh, chest, golden ingot. Ooh. Everything looks different because there's a special medieval look to everything. There's a lot of bookshelves. I do want those. Let me get them all. I mined up a lot of bookshelves and then I found this statue thing which scared me at first because I thought it would come to life and jump out at me or something. But fortunately, it didn't, and I actually got a diamond from the chest beneath it, and also some gear from the statue itself. I made some basic tools, chopped down this really interesting new tree called Palo Verde to get some wood, and then started exploring more of the village. That's, is that a fairy? <laughs> oh man. Chest, cartographer harness. Whoa, nice, I already got two pieces of that stuff. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm gearing up here. Night was approaching, so I found a bed in the village and I headed to sleep. But at the start of day two, something horrible happened. All right, whoa, 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 what is that? Oh my God, that is not good. Ah! Sorry, villagers. Oh, that's so bad. No, I love that village. The village was done for, and there was no way that me or any of the guardian villagers would be able to protect it. So I unfortunately had to leave it behind and go searching for a new place to call home. While running around, I found this little structure with a pot inside, and the pot gave me a couple of golden apples, which Hey, I mean, that, that's awesome. After that, I found a little house strangely made out of endstone. And what was even stranger was that it had a little burning Enderman on the inside. The Enderman scared me, okay? It, it, it looked like it was from the Slenderman or something. So I dug into the house and I attacked it. And this thing has red eyes, which made it even creepier, but I was able to take it down. I found another house while out exploring and this one had some iron gear in it, which was really useful right now. So I put all of it on and I continued my adventures. I found a huge volcano, which was really cool. Some scorpions and some harpies, which uh, they are not friendly. So I ran away from them. I slept out in the open at the end of the day, which is prob that's probably not the best idea, but I managed to make it to day three, and upon awakening, I saw this interesting structure. That does not look safe at all. Like, not at all safe. 
That looks so cool, though. What is going on here? Whoa, ritual altar. Ah! Wait, this is not good. Spawn point linked? Wait, what? A vase? Do I get something if I break that? Whoa. Moonsteel nugget? Purifier moonsteel ingot? Moonsteel sword? Whoa, afterlight. What is this? Wow. Okay. Okay. This is some cool stuff. That wasn't all because right next to the ritual altar, there was a really tall tower that I, I just, I, I had to approach. I think this is safe to enter, right? Whoa. It's a book. Tome of Boots. Ah, so you can put boot enchantments on this, but then I don't know what you do with it. Well, what is this? Common affix home. Can remove affixes, taking some of them as its own. Oh. Ah! 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 I knew I heard TNT. I was so confused though. Oh my God. That exploded right under my feet. I have, I have no idea how I stayed alive. No clue. I went to the bottom of the tower and the items from the chest were scattered all over the place. I mean, I, literally everywhere. So you know what, while, while I collect all that stuff, I think it's a good time for me to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Dragon City. Dragon City is a free to play game where you can collect hundreds of dragons with different elements and rarities and build your own dragon empire. You'll need to collect things like food, gold, and gems in order to expand your city, and then you'll be able to unlock new levels. You can also breed two dragons to get new ones and then hatch them and feed them to evolve. And you can train your dragons and take them to battle in order to make them more powerful. There are several events every week and a brand new battle pass where you can unlock new rewards and dragons every day. You can also find the dragons of your favorite YouTubers. This month they partnered up with Unspeakable and created the Unspeakable Dragon. So right now what you can do is you can click the link in the description and get a special free reward to get you started. 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the Scout Dragon. Thanks again to Dragon City for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so getting back to it, the, the, the tower just exploded and then I started picking up all the stuff off the ground. So I got this new enchantment called Smelting Touch. I also got a bunch of these affix tomes, which I think basically let you put special traits onto items, which could come in handy later on. After that, I, I found this like minotaur thing or something, which reminded me a lot of Narnia, but I, I couldn't talk to him or anything. So I left his camp behind. My inventory was stuffed by this time. So I figured it was time to start setting up a base. And I actually really liked the sand biome that I was in, which I usually wouldn't. And I figured I would set up in it. So I placed down some chests, put all of my stuff in them. And uh, then, um, then, then this happened. I dropped my bed somewhere. That's, that's really bad. That's really bad. Whoa. What? What just happened? What just happened? What just happened? What just happened? No, no, no. Why? Why? What? Yep. It was at this point that I realized I'm just going to do this in survival. There was no way I was going to play this in hardcore, especially counting the other previous like 20 deaths that I had. So I went into the config and made a copy of the world that's in survival. And I don't want to hear it, okay? I don't want to hear that it was a bad idea to change this to survival. I would like to keep my brain cells. So this was a smart decision. Let's just say that the, the, the gods of this world gave me eternal life so that I could defeat all the invading monsters and dragons. Anyways, I returned and got my loot back and I saw a village in the distance. So I headed over there and I slept off the third night. On the next day, I found this thing called a bestiary on a lectern and I was able to learn about lightning dragons from it, which was was actually pretty cool and I decided that I wanted to tame one in the future if I could and then I went outside and um and and, and this happened ah no 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 ah ah please <laughs> no oh okay wait it didn't transfer items give me please don't chase me please don't chase me why why can you not do that Ow! Ow! There's another thing chasing me! 
Dragon, please kill it. Dragon. Dragon. Are they fighting? I don't know what they're doing. Ah, no, I'm not gonna get it. I, um... And so I kept dying to the dragon again and again, and, and eventually I lost my spawn point, and I spawned all the way back where I started. That's... That's really fun. That's really... That is awesome. I decided I would just leave my items behind because I did not have anything that great on me when I died and I did not want to keep dealing with this dragon. So I mined up some bookshelves again and I started looting what was left in the village. I went to bed and on the next day, I actually ended up finding this holy locket, which is a relic that gives you some special perks against undead enemies like zombies and stuff, which is actually pretty good. I equipped it and after that, I ventured out in search for a new home and Along the way, I chopped down some trees and found a ruined portal that had a chest on top of it. There is a chest here. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. Golden leggings with unbreaking eight? Oh, frost chest plate. This legendary armor forged from ice that never melts makes the wearer feel as if they are one with winter. Emits a chilling aura. Whoa, that's so cool. Oh, look at that. Nice. Oh my god, I cannot believe I found this. I got some really, really good items from that chest, and I also got some gauntlets from the other chest, which are dual-wield weapons. I slept off the night, and on day six, I continued my search for a good place to set up a home. I found a lot more unique gear along the way as well, but no matter how long I looked, it seemed like I could not get out of the desert. I could not do it. And after my encounters with dragons, I was not gonna build a base in the desert anymore. On the following day, I ran into some desert bandits while running, and I, I figured I could take them on with the little bit of new gear that I had gotten. Nope, nope, the bandit just one shot me. One shot me. And and you know what <laughs> you know what the best part is? I did not have my spawn point set. So I had to run all the way back to where I died. Unfortunately, the bandits despawned by the time that I got there. After that death, I was done with exploring, okay? And I and I settled on this mountain area that I found. I dug into the corner, set up a little chest area, and I went to sleep. On the next day, I used my skill points to increase my health, which is something you can do in medieval Minecraft, so that's pretty cool. And then I cut down this huge, beautiful, beautiful tree, which gave me a lot of logs, and it also dropped this fade dust stuff, which I checked out and it was pretty interesting, but I had no idea how to use it, so uh, no, no thank you. After that, I did some more work on my base. I cleared out a pathway and made a room that I figured would be the main lobby for all the other rooms in my base. I don't know why the main lobby room wasn't just the room that you walk right into, but that, that's just, that's what I did. I also finally walked up to the house that was right next to my base and there was some free iron pickaxes, which, I snagged, and there was also a dwarven trader in the house, which was really cool. I mean, come on, we, we got we got Lord of the Rings going on here. I then walked around some more, and I found this mob called a rammer, which I, I found out I could tame with golden apples, so that was pretty cool, but I didn't have any on me at the moment. I figured it was a good time to go mine and gear up, so I dug a tunnel down in search of a cave, and I ended up finding an amethyst cluster that was in a cave. I quickly headed home to sort out my inventory and sleep off the night, and on the next day, I wanted to go back to the tunnel that I made, but I literally could not find it for like five minutes. Like, what am I doing? I, thankfully, thankfully I found it and I, I made sure to mark it so that it, that wouldn't happen again. I went down into the cave and I found this cool XP orb ore stuff and it can be used to make an eternal Stella, which makes items indestructible. Yeah, so I'd want to make that for sure if I could. I found platinum as well, which just lets you make some base gear and lead and silver, which could also make gear and they, they could probably make some other stuff as well. But I just, I, 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 I didn't know how to use that stuff. I also found this purple ore, which turned out to be amethyst. And this could be used to make a lightning dragon summoning crystal. I got a bunch of the basic ores as well as some new ones. And then I headed home to drop off my loot and sleep off the night. On day 11, I started working some more on my base. I cleared out the main room evenly. And then I created an entrance to my first actual room in the base. I started mining out the room and I ended up mining to the outside. And I saw this horrifying Hydra thing just sitting outside of my base. So I blocked myself in and did not go anywhere near that thing. Wait, nope, actually, no, I just, I went straight for it. Well, I don't, well, I don't know what, what I was thinking. Oh my God, it's not even me. Wait, did I hit it by accident? Oh no, I did not mean to hit you. 
Whoa, okay, I think I've taken out one head. No, never mind. This thing takes a lot of damage and does not die. I kept trying for a while and then I finally gave up after a day and a half of trying and I let this thing away from my base and got back home. I went strip mining on the next day and I was finding a lot of these fey gems, which I kept thinking were diamonds. I mean, wh why did they have to look so similar? And I also found this blue geode aura that you can make pretty good gear with. I didn't find any caves or diamonds for a very long time while strip mining. I seriously thought that there were not any in this mod pack. I did end up finding a cave eventually and there was an elite witch in there, which I was able to defeat and it dropped two enchanted books with some new enchantments on them. I finally found some diamonds after that, but the diamonds, they were not free. Wow. Whoa, 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 you look nasty. Ah, uh, what is this thing? Oh my god, it's disgusting. This thing is disgusting. Ew. How is it taking damage? Oh, it just died. Ew. I returned home with six diamonds and a bunch of other ores, and I made an enchanting table. But as I was collecting wood for bookshelves, a dragon snuck up on me again. I dug away from it, and then it was stuck in a tree, so... I thought I could fight it, but that was just that was a horrible idea and I got absolutely demolished by it I spent the rest of the day just trying to lead the dragon away from my base So it would stop killing me and luckily I was able to get it far enough to where I could get my stuff back and go safely back to my base Day 16 I chopped down more trees because I wanted to have a lot of wood and I found a desert temple while doing so which I looted and it gave me the old eye, which is the first out of the 12 ender eyes I needed to activate the ender portal. So that, that was great. And it also gave me this double axe weapon, which I replaced my old weapon with. While running back home, I found this dungeon entrance, which I skeptically entered. And there were a lot of zombies coming from the inside, which I was able to fight off. But then when I went inside further, an enderman started attacking me. And I got out of there before I died. Nighttime came, so I made my way back home, and throughout days 17 to 19, I worked on my base some more. I finished the level 30 enchanting table, which I, I couldn't actually enchant anything yet because I kept losing my levels to dragons, but I, I hoped that I would be able to soon. I cleared out another room, and I decided that it would be my chest room, so I placed down some double chests, and I figured that they would do for the time being. I made the floor of the lobby room out of cobblestone and oak planks, the good old design, and I also placed slabs on the pathway so that I wouldn't have to keep jumping up the steps. After that, I did the walls with a stone brick and oak plank design, and then I made the ceiling out of polished marble. That was it for the lobby room, and I also did a bit more building in the enchanting room with a more unique design. I finally finished with all the building stuff for the time being, so I made some gear using this blue geode stuff that I'd mined up earlier, and it was better than iron, so that was pretty good. And then I went out to do my favorite thing, adventuring. As soon as I went out, I got attacked by this bat person thing, which it's just creepy. And then I looted this chest on the top of a ruined portal that had a relic called magma boots. And these give you lava walking and they don't even replace your actual boots. So they are awesome. I went into another village after that and just some, some really creepy stuff happened. Ow, ow, get away. What was that? Stop those noises, please stop those sounds, please. Please stop those sounds. Where, where'd it go, where'd it go? I don't like this. It's gonna jump at me again. Oh man. Whoa, whoa. What? What? I can't handle this world. I, just, I, I, I can't do it. I returned to my loot, but when I did, I got ambushed by a leopard. I was able to shield bash it to death, which it was kind of sad but it was all I could do and it attacked me first. Okay, I, I literally had no choice. And then I made this bedroll thing, which let me sleep off the night without setting my spawn point. I used all of the new skill points I'd gotten to increase my health even more, which as you can see, gave me three and a half extra hearts. So that was really nice. I then looted a couple more desert temples. And on the next day, I approached some kind of a ruined temple. What's going on here? Oh, wait, there's a lever here. Press that. Just moved something, I think. Interesting. Are there more lovers? There's another lover. Here's another lover. And another one. Oh, here's one more. 
And here's one more. Okay, I pressed every lever, I think. So let's see what's going on. What is going on here? What is that? Oh! What? Yep, real nice, real nice. Uh, apparently, I was supposed to make a blindfold, otherwise Medusa one-shots you by turning you into stone. Good to know. I spent the next day looking for leather and string to make a blindfold, but I ended up getting turned into KFC by, uh, by a dragon, as my death message always says. Anyways, I did end up making the blindfold, and on the next day, I headed into Medusa's lair for a second time. And let's go. Where is she? Where is she? Got her. Legendary item, Medusa head. I think I can turn things into stone. Nice. I teleported back to my base using a waystone that I'd brought over earlier, and then I was just moving my bed when this happened. Enderman, what are you doing? Why have you done this? Why have you done this? You really need to stop. He's gonna start picking up blocks from my house. I gotta get him out of here. Dude. Dude. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I did not mean to look at you, my friend. I did not mean to look at you. 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 Oh, I just removed my bed. Oh my... Why does everything... Why? 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 I spent the next two days trying to get back home. And, uh... Th this is how it went. There's a knight down there. No! No! I really hope it out it can't outrun me. Stop. What? It just Okay, there's water. It's fine. Unless she can walk on water somehow. Wait, he's still following me. Wait, what? Wait, what? What? Stop! Stop following me, please. Oh my god! What? Stop! I think I got away. Oh my god, it's a dragon. Nice. 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 <laughs> nice. Okay. Alright. Oh, it's a dragon again. Oh, it's a dragon again. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. Every <laughs> oh my god. Why am I doing this? No. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, please, please, man, please. Why do you exist? It's still following me. Nope, I mean, there's just no way. There's honestly, I think there's actually just no way. There's no way. Eventually, I did get back home and, and I got my stuff back. I decided to go mining again because after dying so much, I wanted to get a full set of diamond armor. I ended up finding this huge lava cave. It is just insane. And there were a lot of diamonds here too. So this was a really good find. When I just about returned home though, the dragon attacked me again. I used my enchanted golden apple and, and tried to fend it off but the, there was just no way. I led the dragon away from my base and then returned for my loot. And again, I was practically down to no levels. I mean, come on, I just gotten so many from mining and I lost them all. At this point, I figured that I should probably use a bow to defend myself better. So I started farming gravel for flint and then I went out searching for feathers. And when I was doing that, uh, an old friend approached. No. No. Let's go, buddy. You know what? Let's go. Oh, it's on the ground now. That's good. Take that. Ah. Golden apple. Okay, into the water I go. Die. Come on. Come on. I'm running out of golden apples. Yes! Yes! I got it! I got it! I got it! I got it! Yes! Yes! Oh, yes. 
Give me all of that. 16 dragon scales too. Woo! I finally defeated the fire dragon. It wouldn't be terrorizing me anymore. This was a good day. It was a good day. I made some dragon scale armor and a bone bow and I headed out in search of more adventure. I found a Cyclops and I thought that I could outsmart him by fighting him in this castle and using my new gear, but nope, he, uh, he ate me. Yeah, the next couple of days I didn't find much. I just found some structures here and there. And on day 33, I went on a ship and it had some skeleton pirates on it, but I was able to take them out pretty easily. The chest had some ores and a skilled skeleton dropped an unbreaking eight book which would definitely come in handy later, so I kept that. I also found out that I actually couldn't use the dragon bone bow that I made with regular arrows, and I needed to get dragon bone arrows, so for the time being, I would just have to use another bow, which was a bummer. I did get a lot of feathers from defeating the pirates, though, so I could make a good amount of arrows. I finished my pillage by the next day, and actually, it's, it's, it's really fun being a pirate. I, I kind of wish I wasn't pirate. Anyways, after that, this happened. Ow. Why am I dying? 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 How do I replenish? What? Overworked themselves to death? Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is so... What? It's because my energy bar went fully down. I don't even know how to replenish that. Yeah, so that was the first time I, I realized that I had an energy bar that actually loses energy as I run and, and do things. When I returned home, I made a new sword and crafted some arrows. And the first thing that I wanted to do is get revenge on the Cyclops that killed me earlier. So I headed back over to where I saw him before. Take that, buddy. Oh, wait, this boat pulls enemies in. Oh my god, wait, this is the worst bow ever. This is the worst bow. I should- oh, This- I should not have used it. It brings enemies closer to me. I did not think about that. Wait, this is a terrible bow. Okay, let me just finish defeating the Cyclops with it, but this is a horrible bow. Oh my god. I've never had a worse bow in my life. Ah, you're creepy. I cannot believe it. Oh, nice. Snake's killing it. Oh. And it's really close to me. Okay. Run. Oh, boy. Home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that was a convenient teleportation. That's good. Okay, let me at least use these. Ah! Ah! Oh! 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 That's bad. He's so close. Ooh. Okay, I'm over the water now. This is not the Cyclops' forte. Wait, he didn't take... Wait, he doesn't take he didn't take damage? Oh, oh no. Can he walk in the water? He can't get to me here. Oh, I got him. Woo! <laughs> oh, that was that took so much. Oh man, I got him. Okay, all I got is mutton and leather from this guy? Oh my god. I wanted to finally get experience for a level 30 enchantment, so I went out and farmed mobs in the night, which is something that I hadn't done before, and it ended up being really good. I got a helmet that gives you three additional hearts when you put it on, so that was pretty cool. And after that, I found a, a zombie in full diamond armor, and he ended up being a boss by the name of Father Tabitha. This guy was a complete tank, but I was able to get him down, and he ended up dropping a rare pickaxe that mines in a one by two area and has diamond effectiveness against all blocks, which means it's just as fast as an axe and shovel. And it also had mending. It, it was just an absolutely godly pickaxe. I kept farming mobs into the night and then I overworked myself again. <laughs> and I ended up losing all of the levels that I'd grinded for. I just, I, I kept forgetting about the stamina bar. I, 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 I don't know why. Nevertheless, I, I continued on with my adventures, okay? And shortly after I found this hidden dungeon and it had spawners, which I broke for spawner shards, which I could then use to make my own spawners. And I found a guardian bow in this dungeon, which is a really powerful bow, and it's exactly what I needed. It also had some diamond gear in it, which I definitely needed. And it had the lost eye, the second eye 
a vendor out of the 12 that I needed to collect. So that was great. And the night I farmed mobs again and I ended up finding a boss named Wenwen the Wise. I almost ran out of stamina while fighting him, but this time, I noticed before it was too late and I was very careful. He dropped some leggings with indestructible on them, which meant that I could put that on another item and it would never break. And he also dropped a nice chest plate. I slept off the night and I finally made a backpack on the next day, which I upgraded to diamond. And it has a crazy amount of storage, like, Wow. I continued adventuring around and farming experience, and on the next day, I was looting a building when this happened. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. There's a dragon. Oh, not this again. I can't. I don't have the armor for this right now. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Maybe I can shoot at it. No, buddy, buddy, buddy. Uh. Okay, I'm running. I'm just gonna shoot at it from here. I'm just shooting at it. This might work. This might work. This might actually work. Hold on. I got a good bow now. That's good. This is good. This is good. Okay. I'm gonna golden apple up. My armor is definitely gonna break. Come on. Come on. Come on. Did I get it? Yes. <laughs> yes. With that, I defeated another fire dragon. I picked up some of its fire blood and I got back home. And on day 40, I made a special friend. Hi. There we go. Get up. Whoa. What just happened? Um, do I need to feed you another one? Oh. Whoa. Nice. I named it Rumble just because that's what came to mind and I was pretty happy with the name. I made Rumble a little pen next to my base and the next thing that I wanted to do is head into the nether. Whoa, that is a cool looking nether portal. Wow. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Wow. This is quite crazy. I found this temple in the nether and I had those magma boots on so I could walk right over lava to get to it. That's so useful. Oh man, what is this? What? Oh. I think I can fight these. I can take them on, right? Okay. I need to break all these spawners. All right. Nether eye, nice third eye okay here's another spawner Ooh. okay this is a bit more dangerous break the spawner break that spawner i also got a wither helmet and chest plate which both give life stealing so i put those on and on the top floor there was some really good loot i got leggings that gave me speed six whenever i jumped i mean these things were crazy and i got even more gear and oars as well i just zoomed right on back home using the new speedy pants that i had and i dropped off my stuff and hydrated and then headed back into the nether to try to find a bastion which i did and it was all going well okay before i got one shotted by a minotaur randomly I, I don't know. On, on the next day, I got my stuff back and I was adventuring around some more when my energy dropped to zero again. Somehow, this time it actually went back up and I survived and I had to wait for it to regenerate so that I could go over to this lava ship. And on the inside of it, it had some netherite boots with a bunch of enchantments on them. And also the fourth eye of vendor I needed, the black eye. I ended up getting carried away adventuring in the nether and I com completely ran out of food. I, I was literally barely hanging on by eating rotten flesh, uh, but eventually the dehydration got me and, and I lost everything, all of my levels. I lost all of my levels. I got my stuff back though, returned home and I had gotten a lot of wither bones from the nether. So I was able to make a dragon bone sword and I combined it with the fire dragon blood that I had to make it a flame sword. <laughs> I was, I was looking good. I went out in the night again to collect loot and experience as usual, but I also wanted to get souls from ghosts because you can use those to make spawners and I wanted to make my own spawner room. But while I was out farming mobs, my energy bar went to one again. And honestly, I did not want to sit and wait for it to regenerate again, okay? I mean, c come 
on. I'm walking around with a flame sword, but then here I am pausing to have a little breather. No, no, okay? So I, I, I removed my stamina from the world, and I do not regret it. And then after things were back to how they should be, I fought this mutant enderman. I mean, this this thing was crazy. Ooh, it does a lot of damage. Can I hit it with my bow? Nope. Are they fighting each other? They're fighting each other or something. I don't know what it's doing. Wow, it has a lot of health though. Okay, I got it. On the next day, I found this huge dungeon structure. I went in and it was pretty empty as I made my way up. But once I got to the top, it got a lot more dangerous. Ooh. Could have fell there. Oh boy. I don't know where so many things are spawning from. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. I don't know what's going on. They have a lot of health too. And I'm telling you, these chests better have some good stuff. Okay, that's all I'm trying to say. Emerald door, that's not bad. Name tag, okay. I looted some more of the chests on the top of the tower, and then I left the building and went back home. By this time, I had three souls from all of the mob farming I'd been doing, so I turned them all into zombie essences, and now all that I had to do is make a room to put my spawners into. I worked on the spawner room from day 49 to day 55. The first thing I did is I dug a staircase down and there was a cave which I made sure to light up so it wouldn't mess up the spawners. And I started digging out a room which was a tedious process. But in the night I also got another soul to add to my spawner room so I would have four spawners now. I finished mining everything out by day 52 and then it took me a bit of time to figure out the watering system but I did and the spawner worked well. I decided to change it so that the zombies would fall into the middle of the room instead of to the side so that I could activate all of the spawners while at the bottom. And with that, the experience farm was finished. I spent the next few days enchanting. I got health steel on my sword, which was great. I mean, this thing's gonna save me a lot. I got efficiency four on my pickaxe and it took a while, but I got protection on most of my gear. It wasn't anything perfect, but it was good enough for the time being. After all the adventuring and enchanting that I'd been doing, I decided I would take a little break from all that and switch things up to building for a bit. I went out to get wood and then dug out one in each direction of the chest room and filled in the walls and floor of the chest room with the same design that I had in the lobby area. I also changed up the design on the ceiling and I made this marble and diorite mix, which I think fit pretty nicely. Next, I started working on the enchanting room. So I dug out one in each direction and then changed up the design for this room and used these new chairs cherry wood planks for the walls. I had to go out to get some more cherry wood and I also got a lot of sand. While I was getting sand, and unfortunately, uh, Rumble just kind of ran off somewhere and I couldn't find him. Uh, I was I was pretty sad about losing him. Rumble, buddy, where are you? Did he really leave me? Oh no, I lost him, I can't find him. Rumble. You know what? I'm sure that he's going to be very happy out in the wild. I made a sandstone border around the walls and I still had the ceiling to finish, but a blood moon occurred and I wanted to test out my new sword. I put sharpness and sweeping edge on it, renamed it to Aragon and tested it out. And the, the sword was really good. And I, I was pretty much staying at full health while fighting all the time. But then a new dragon approached. Whoa! Oh no. No, this is really bad timing. No, this is extremely bad timing for this. I don't have my bow. I don't have any golden apples. Oh man. Dude, dude, dude. Dude. Get away. Get away. Oh man. <laughs> no, no, I can't fight a dragon right now. Fortunately, I was able to make my way back home through underground tunnels and I got away from the lightning dragon, which I, I just, I couldn't defeat yet, but don't worry. That time would come soon. I got to work. I grinded the mob farm and enchanted my gear again. And I realized that I had gotten a sharpness seven book from one of the upgraded mobs that I fought earlier, which that, that was a crazy upgrade. I also upgraded all of my gear to netherite and I was becoming 
very, very solid. I kept enchanting over the next couple of days until I had a very good set of gear. I didn't wait to make it perfect or anything because looking at the amount of days I had left, I realized I did not have much more time to get all of the eyes for the portal. The next eyes I wanted to get were the snow and jungle eyes. And I wanted to look for them now because I wasn't sure how long it would take me to find a snow and jungle biome. While exploring, I found a sea serpent and this was the perfect time to test my dragon bone bow. And I, I, I literally one shot it. Yeah, crazy bow, seriously, crazy. But that victory did not last long because uh, I was fighting a boss and it literally one shot me. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't believe it. Even with all of my stuff, it just it wrecked me. There wasn't a waystone anywhere near where I died either. So I spent a whole day getting back to my stuff. Now, now I was really starting to test my luck on getting to the Ender Dragon in time. I defeated more sea serpents and I also found this huge structure while adventuring. I mean, this thing was massive. Whoa, okay. Enter Sandman. Whoa, okay, hold on, this is crazy. Woo! Okay, there's mobs already. Barrel, arrow hoarder, horse fire protection, eight. Oh! Ow. Okay, this is uh, actually pretty dangerous. Woo! Okay. Okay, this is crazy. It had a lot of mobs in it, which I was able to get through, but my gear was definitely losing its durability and it was it was losing it really fast at the top of the building i came to this treasure room which had a bunch of blocks of ore and some good gear as well i also got this arrow quiver relic that makes you charge your bow twice as fast so that was a really cool find my netherite gear was now very low on durability but i had been collecting protection and unbreaking books over the past days and i was prepared to enchant a full new set of sea serpent arms. I grinded mobs, enchanted, grinded mobs, enchanted, and everything was going well. I was making a super set of armor until I put an enchantment called Reckless on my boots, which they, they had my best enchantments on them at the time, protection and unbreaking eight, but the Reckless enchantment that I put on them put me down to eight hearts. In, in return, it gave me 50% more damage, but that trade was not worth 12 hearts for me. Not, not in a world of dragons and other mythical creatures. I tried to find ways to take only the reckless enchantment off, but I couldn't do so without losing all of my other enchantments too. So I had to make a choice, either make new boots or try to carry the ones I had and I chose to stick with the ones I had. I went out to test my new health situation and it wasn't too bad. It seemed like I wasn't taking that much damage and I was staying alive. So for now, it would do. I also started searching for an ocean monument alongside with the snow and jungle biomes because it also had an eye that I needed, the guardian eye. I was really fast underwater with the sea serpent gear and everything. So after some time, I was able to find one and I made my way inside. And after looking around for an elder guardian, I defeated him and he dropped the guardian eye. And when I returned home with the eye, a familiar creature awaited me. Oh, it's a dragon. Hi, dragon. Welcome to my bow. This thing is pretty strong. Just so, uh, oh, just so you know, that rhymed well. I have minor fatigue. This is not very fair, dragon, okay? And you're dead. And you're dead. Okay, all right, buddy. I know, I know. I know, I know, I know. I continued my search for jungle and snow biomes over the next couple of days, and there was no luck. And to make things worse, I was out collecting sea serpent scales to repair my armor, when the strongest sea serpent I have ever seen approached me. That thing just absolutely destroyed me and my helmet in the process. I got back to my gear and I had to make and enchant a new helmet and boots because I was done having eight hearts and my helmet broke. I got back to searching for a snow or jungle biome after that again. And while searching for those, I figured I could also find some of the other places where eyes drop and I did just that. I found a pillager outpost and on the top chest, I found the corrupted eye, the sixth eye that I needed. And on the next day, I found this pink mansion and I knew that there would be evokers on the inside, which meant that if I would be lucky, one of them could drop the magical eye. Check this place out. Oh, for you. Oh. Got you. Oh boy. 
Here we go again with a bunch of things. Oh boy. Can't see a thing. Okay, die Cyclops. Die Cyclops. Okay. Oh boy. Hi everyone. Hello. Alrighty then. How do I hit this guy? There we go. Wow, there were a lot of them. Ooh, magical eye, yes. I got the evoker eye. Nice, that's what I came here for. Eye of Cyclops, area of effect weapon. Inflicts weakness on to all nearby hostiles when held. Whoa. I headed out with my seventh eye and some totems of undying. So I would say that that was really successful. As I was running, I ran into this sleeping ice dragon, which was the third dragon I needed to defeat. I didn't want to risk fighting it yet because my helmet was just about broken. So I quickly returned home, repaired my helmet, and I headed back to the sleeping ice dragon to fight it. I started firing at it and my bow did massive damage. This, this dragon didn't even have a chance to touch me. With that, I had defeated three of the dragons in this world, but I still needed to defeat the ender dragon, and I honestly was not sure if I would be able to get all of the eyes of ender in time. While searching on day 83, I found a very dangerous dungeon, but I didn't know that yet. Oh, and here's some underwater thing. Whoa, it's some kind of a cool dungeon. Whoa. Debris miner. Oh man, he's strong. Not to my bow. Whoa, Ferris Rotnot's right there. Huh, I can fight the Ferris Rotnot right now. Alright, let's go. We can do it. One more hit. Oh, there we go. Got him. Got him. What is going on here? Whoa! Woo. Okay. A lot of ghosts. Whoa. First of all, I need to break the spawner. Kill me up, please. Okay, let me use my bow, because my bow's overpowered. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Wow, these are very powerful. Okay. Chests. Diamond block, that's all right. Really cool cave here. Wow, look at that. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, get me away. Pull an apple. And fire. This is the first time I've actually had to use my bow in a dungeon. Am I out of arrows? I'm out of arrows. No way. That is not good. Woo. So much going on. Woo. Found you, Guardian. Ah. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's so... They're so strong. They're so powerful. I got absolutely wrecked. I, I did not think that anything could damage me like that with all the gear that I had but apparently it could. I got my stuff back and I got out of that place. I, I did not want to venture any further into there. I again didn't find anything on the next day, but then on day 87, I came to a revelation. <laughs> I remembered that there was something called the nature's compass. And when I checked to see if it was in this world, it was. This thing lets you find any biome you want. I mean, I, I really wish that I had this at the start, but at least now is good enough. So I selected the jungle biome on it and it located one 6,666 blocks away. Not a good number. To my enormous benefit though, I had waypoints that helped me get there. And just on the peak of the sunrise of day 88, I found a jungle. And better than that, I found a jungle temple right away. I went through this place, careful of traps, looting all of the chests that I saw, but to my disappointment, no eye was there. I found another temple of the same design and I went around looting all of it as well, but I didn't find any eyes there either. Then I found a new type of jungle temple. I carefully dug down into it and it was definitely trapped because there was TNT all over the place. But I made sure not to press any buttons or activate any redstone. And when I got to looting the chests, boom, there it was, the rogue eye. I also got a cool relic called 
the fragrant flower, which it gave you some benefits to do with bees. And I didn't have any bees or anything, but you know what? I loved having a flower on my head. Boom, equipped. Oh, look, I have a flower on my head now. <laughs> I like it. I like flowers. Carrying over my momentum from my success in finding a jungle, I set the nature's compass to a snowy tundra biome next, and it was 3,000 blocks away. As I was going there, though, I, I got ambushed, and, and it wasn't just by one enemy. It was by a lot, and I didn't have any more dragon bone arrows to defend myself with. Dude, no, 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 no. Not right now, man. Not right now, man. Ah. Uh, ah! Dragon? Dragon? Are you serious right now? Dragon. My helmet's gonna break. Dragon, please, yes. I returned home to make some new gear and then after following the nature's compass for over 3000 blocks, I made it to a snowy biome. It was a really interesting place actually. It had these swirls on the ground and in general, it was almost like a maze. I saw a polar bear while out exploring and I love polar bears. So I stopped and I admired it for a moment. I kept seeing these ice islands up high as I was running around. So I decided that I would check one out. And when I got to the top, it had pretty much nothing other than some raw fish. So that was pretty disappointing. I found a village as well, which I thought might have the eye I was looking for, but unfortunately it just it, it didn't have any chest in it. And then I found this ice pyramid, which had strays on the inside, but I was able to take them out fairly easily. I looted the first chest, but it didn't have anything good. And as I made my way to the top, neither did any of the other chests. That was pretty unfortunate. And now it was the night of day 92. So I was really cutting it close and I had four more eyes to get. I then found this golden moth, which I killed. And that was not a good idea. Whoa, a moth just dropped gold. That's cool. <laughs> Retribution, harmful. Uh-oh, what does that mean? Should I not have killed the golden moth? Whoa, what is this? Oh, I think I might be about to die, but there's no cows here for me to take off this effect, so. Retribution. Oh, wow, yep. That just about one-shot me. Good thing I had the totem of undying in my relic slot, otherwise karma would have killed me. I continued searching into the next day and eventually I ran into a snowy taiga biome. And in this biome, I found this big dark building with skulls around it and the blocks on the outside were unbreakable. I carefully made my way inside and the skeletons had glowing blue eyes. Okay, this is pretty cool, but I don't have much time to look at places like this. I really need that other eye, please. No, no. Oh boy, a lot of mobs. A lot of mobs. Oh boy. Oh wow, that's a big thing, whatever that is. Oh wow, this place is crazy. I looted all of the chests that I found, but none of them ended up having the eye in them. So I got out of there. Soon after that, as I was running around, I found a shipwreck. There were some illagers there, so I fought them off. And one of them dropped an item called the shell horn. This horn was supposed to summon someone called Captain Cornelia, but when I tried, nothing happened. So I was probably supposed to use it somewhere else or something like that. The chest on the ship actually had some really good enchantments as well. Like I wish that I could have gotten these earlier, but unfortunately I just got them now. Anyways, I left that ship eyeless and um, I continued on. I kept searching and I was still finding nothing. I was getting unlucky and now it was already day 95. I like, I, I, like the, the, the 100 days were almost over. So I decided I would at least test my luck with finding the other eyes for the time being. And the hardest one to get was the wither eye because I would need to defeat the wither for it. So that's the first thing I wanted to get. I headed into the nether and I searched for another fortress. On day 96, I found a medium sized fortress and I started farming wither skeletons skeletons right away. But while I was doing that, this happened. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on there? What is that? Whoa! Ah! 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 What? 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 What is that? What is this thing? Oh my god! Oh my god! What is this thing? I can't even hit it. Ah! 
Ah! Did I kill it? Oh! What was that? Mutant Blaze Core. That was crazy. And if I would have died there, I probably would have no chance of getting to the Ender Dragon. Anyways, I sat farming Wither Skeletons for a while longer, and after quite a lot of Wither Skeleton kills, I finally got my hands on three Wither Skeleton Skulls. I wasn't quite done in the Nether yet though, because I still needed to get one more eye here, which was the end crystal eye. I basically needed end crystal fragments to craft one, and these fragments can only be found in bastions. So I headed back to a bastion that I found a while back, and I found two ores of this end crystal stuff, and that's all I needed because I already had two fragments from before. I returned home in the night, quickly crafted the end crystal eye, and then headed to summon and fight the wither right away. But after I summoned it, this happened. Yeah, it, 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 just, it just blew me up. I, I did not expect that. Worse yet, it glitched out and it just disappeared. It was, I don't know, it was a Houdini wither or something. So I had to back up my inventory and summon it again. And this time I made sure to stay away when it was forming itself so I wouldn't just get blown up. And from there, I was easily able to take it down using my insane bow. I got the wither eye and now I needed two more eyes. One of them was actually really easy to get. It was the witch eye and all I had to do was use a witch pupil that dropped from a witch with an ender eye and boom, I had the witch eye. Now I just needed to get the cold eye. That's all. I just I needed that eye that I'd already spent so much time trying to get. And all I could do is head back to the snow biome and pray that I could find it somewhere. But I was having no luck anywhere. I walked everywhere I could, entered every structure I saw, but I wasn't getting it. I realized that this was almost all for nothing. That all the building that I did, all the adventuring I did, I wasn't gonna be able to complete my objective. I found another one of the ice pyramids that I'd been to before and I figured it wouldn't have anything, but you know what? <laughs> you know what? It did. It had the cold eye right there, just looking at me. Just a frozen eye, just looking at me. I grabbed that thing and I went right back cold. I started bolting for the end gate following my rogue eyes. I didn't manage to find it on day 98 though. I had two more days, two more days to get to the end and defeat the ender dragon. I ran for my life, seriously. No nothing else in existence mattered to me in that moment. I was, I was just full on sprinting. And with all of that dedication in the nighttime, I found the end city. Yes, 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 yes. It's right here. I found it. I found it. I found it. Yes. I headed down as fast as possible, and there it was. There it was, the end gate. This place was a maze, but after a while, I managed to find a puzzle room, so this meant that I was on the right track. I did not do any puzzle, though. No, no way. No way. <laughs> what I did is break right through the walls. That was my puzzle. And you know what? I did that for the next puzzle and the puzzle right after that because I did not have any time to do them at all. And after I broke through that third puzzle room, there it was. There it was in all of its glory, the Ender Portal. Right away, I placed down each of the 12 eyes I had found throughout the last 100 days of searching. And with that, I instantly entered into the end. Okay. I made it to the end. Come on, please. <laughs> please. Okay, Ender Dragon? Ender Dragon? Where are you at, Ender Dragon? Come on. Okay, let me just break this stuff. I don't even need to break this stuff. Let me just shoot at the Ender Dragon. I do so much damage. Um, okay, I might need to break the crystals, actually. Oh, 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 oh. That, that does a lot of damage. Where are my golden apples? Come on, come on. Yes. Is that it? Okay, shooting at the Ender Dragon. Come on. Is it coming down? It's coming down. Okay, I gotta do a lot of damage to it right now. Let's go. Oh, it's a mutant Enderman. It's a mutant Enderman. Oh. What's going on there? Okay, I better not look at that thing. Okay. I'm hitting it. Come on. Oh. Oh. What's going on? It's a mutant enderman. It's a mutant enderman. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. 
Get away. He's dying. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop that. That is, that is crazy. Yes. Oh, I did it. That mutant enderman could have killed me. I don't know what. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yes. Oh, yes. I did it. I did it. I, I barely did it. I, I defeated the ender dragon, which completed my final objective. And, and now the world was saved from all four invading dragons and the other creatures. Thanks again to Dragon City for sponsoring this video. If you want to try it out for free, you can click on the link in the description and get some special rewards as well. Other than that, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out everyone.